Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. For three weeks in a row now, we have been dealing with what we believe is a word for, for those in America. Now, most of my audience, of course, is uh, Christians. We're on a lot of Christian television stations. We are on, are on some secular networks as well. And so our audience is uh, very geared toward the Word and understanding the Scripture and being like the sons of Issachar who want to know how to discern the times and the seasons. I want to do something a little bit different on the program today. As a matter of fact, I've been waiting for about a year and four months to do this particular program. But we felt like we should wait until the timing was absolutely right and the setup of what we're about to do was in place and it now is. I'm going to tell you a story. Now I have with me Mark Casto. Mark, toward a little later on, is going to come in and give you a couple verses of Scripture to help and give his part of this. Let me go back and tell you what happened to me a few years back. I was in my office and I was asking the Lord, what is your purpose and your will for me, let's say, if you tarry the next 15 years? And I was thinking about the age of 65, you know. Now, I'm now 52 years of age, age of 65. What will I do in these next few years? And I knew that I could continue to just do what I'm doing, preach the prophetic word, have the conferences, and be quite happy doing that. Mm. Winning people to the Lord, expanding the Internet, expanding the ministry to reach more people, I would be happy with that. I heard the Holy Spirit deep inside of me say, do you want to go where I'm going? And that's how he said it. And I said, of course. He said, I'm going to the sons and daughters. I'm going to the sons and daughters. This is the verse. I want to put, up on, put this verse on the screen right now. This is the verse immediately that came into my spirit when I heard that. It shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, your old men dream dreams, and upon my men servants and on my maid servants will I pour out of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And that prop, the word prophesy there can, can mean two things. It can mean seeing into the future and revealing what's going to happen in the future in advance, or it can also mean to encourage through the word and to teach the word. They call it foretelling and forthtelling in theology. Now, when God spoke that to me, I did not know what I was supposed to do. And he began to drop into my spirit two things. And I want you to hear me because these two things are very significant. He said, I want you to build a facility here in Cleveland that will be a gathering place for the next generation, for the young people, for children and for young people, that they can all come together and worship they can come and bring their friends to be delivered from alcohol and drugs. And it will be a place, a neutral place, non-denominational, not controlled by any denomination of people. But it will be their place in the entire area. I want you to invite, uh, have conferences, convergences we call them now. Mm -hmm. Con is that what? Confluence. Confluence, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Con see, I'm all, I can't even say the right word. So that's <laughs> why I've got you here to get it, get it right. We, we do converge. We yeah, converge, we converge on the that's city. For sure. That's what I had in mind. So the Confluence Conferences, which we're having one this weekend, I mean, this is taped, of course, way in advance. And so the Spirit of God put this on me to have build a gathering place. Now, I'm going to tell you the whole story, so stay with me. When I went to do this, I went to look for property, and lo and behold, the Lord allowed us to buy the property directly behind our ministry center, which is 78 acres. That's a story in itself. When I bought the property, the Lord had put in my heart part two of this, that I was to build a youth camp that part of the theme is the world that Jesus knew. Mm -hmm. And in this camp, we're going to have a Roman praetorium, and we're going to teach them on the armor of God. Yeah. We're going to have a potter's wheel making pottery, and we're going to teach them on the spiritual aspect of that. We're going to have the food that Jesus ate. And I'm not going to tell all the details because it's a vision that the Lord gave me and I'm just going to keep a lot of it, that part of it, because the building will come first and the camp has to come later, okay? When this began to happen, the Spirit of God began to open up my understanding. Now, 
What took place is very, very odd. Based on a prophetic word, Mark Casto had the extreme ministry, a group of young people meeting at Brother T.L. Lowry's Global Foundation Center in Cleveland. I showed up one night. Take it from there what happened. Uh, we were in a prayer meeting. Just uh, It was 6 o'clock. We always pray an hour before. And uh, while we were praying, uh, I see you there. And, uh, I'm Which like, I'd never well, been there before. Yeah, I knew you as an acquaintance, and, I, and you look at me and you say, before you go out, I need to talk to you. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, what did I do, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but anyways, what Perry didn't know is that 30 days before that is when the Lord spoke to me through a fast to start praying for your heart to turn towards our generation. And so after that, you come to me and you tell me, you say, Mark, you said 30 days ago, which is the day in my journal it's that amazing. I wrote down to start praying for your heart to turn. Yes. You said 30 days ago, Thank God you, put Lord. this on my heart and I feel like we need to come together to do this. And so you shared with me about the property, the vision and all that. And I'm thinking, oh my Lord. And I go tell my wife, I said, Destiny, this is what I've been telling you since I was 18 years old, that we would have a camp, a youth camp that we would be a you part of. You wrote this down in a journal. In a journal, one of my now, first you journals. You understand, I did not know this. I knew nothing about him, right. the 30 day thing he'd been praying. I was just seeking God and God said, go tonight up there and talk to Mark. Yeah. yeah. So Spoken when I was 18 and got called to Thank preach, you. God showed me six things. And the third thing was this youth camp. And all my friends that know me in the ministry have heard me talk about this youth camp <laughs> since I was 18. So if you, if you want to find out the proof of it, you can go ask anybody that has known me. I've been drawing <laughs> it out and writing it out for, for years, talking about the, the, the dorms and everything. Yeah. And he starts sharing this vision with me and I'm going, I thought I was going to have to go out Midwest to be a part of something like this. Where's, where's acres like that in Cleveland, Tennessee? Yeah. And when you come and told me that, I said, not only did it confirm my call, but it confirmed the fast that I was on at that time. And it confirmed that we were supposed to be together to do yes. this. Yes. And uh, so that's when God started getting the ball rolling. So we go out. We're talking at the T.L. Lowry Center. And the first youth meeting we had with the young group, young people there in the, in the kind of like a mentoring. Right. We just said, God's going to give us a sign. We go outside. Listen, it's not raining, and there's a rainbow over our property. Double this, rainbow. A double rainbow, yeah. Double rainbow. And the kids are going, oh, my. <laughs> it was like, these are, these are college kids, by the way. Right. Wow. And I said, guys, it's not raining. There's no clouds. There's a <laughs> rainbow over there. And just little things like that that just mm -hmm. was a encouragement to us, all right? right? Now, one of the reasons the Lord had me do this and I will not, it's not time for me to tell the story. It's not time for me to go into details. Was well, someone I loved very dearly that the devil tried to kill him. Right. And it was a young person. And lit, when I say tried to kill him, literally tried to kill him. Mm -hmm. And I, I told the enemy, you're going to pay for this. I said, you're going to pay. Right. Because this one incident, had it not happened, I don't know that my heart could have been turned in the manner it was suddenly turned. Right, right. God's going to fulfill His purpose eventually. Right. But it turned quick, and I said, we've got to reach the young people. Because I found out that night that in our county, 18 young people had died of drug overdoses That's over right. a period of time. That's right. A doctor said, it's very sad, Reverend, said, this town needs help. All communities do, but this town needs help. So the Lord began to talk to me about, first of all, the sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Right. Now, this leads us to why a 52-year-old man who's preached prophecy, spiritual warfare, faith, holding conferences across the country, international ministry through television, would have a desire to see young people touched. It's right. called the hearts of the fathers. Can you explain this, Mark? And then I'm going to give more of the vision. It's, it's, it's Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, and it says, Before the coming of the Lord, this is, this is a prophecy we overlook all the time. Before the coming of the Lord, God's going to do a special work in the hearts of fathers. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and, and He's looking for people that want to raise up the next generation. And so it's, it's a heart change where God says, okay, fathers, we've got a generation that doesn't know the works of God. We've got a generation that hasn't seen the manifestations of God. And I need you to take what you know mm. from your heritage. I need you mm. to take your experiences. I need to take, take uh, all that I've allowed inside of you, and I need you to release it upon a generation. Because it says that not only would the father's hearts turn, but the children's heart would turn. Uh, John the Baptist, his commission was that the disobedient would be turned to the wisdom of the just. So he's talking about there's wow. a disobedient generation yes. 
that's looking for answers, they're in so much bondage. But they and need a wise have, person. That's right. They've got to yeah. have a wise man. Wise they've got to have a father mm -hmm. to speak them and show them how to get out mm -hmm. of it. Because this generation wow. doesn't want to be in bondage. No. They want to be free. But the only way to get free is through the Spirit of God working through a father. Because a father has the wisdom. A father it releases the identity. The life experiences and that's so on. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. they're looking for affirmation. And so that's why God mm -hmm. uses wow. fathers. God, God's not using evangelists. He's using fathers. You know, you said something just now and I want to add to that the affirmation part. It is a fact that men get with other men in certain relationships mm -hmm. and even went, well, especially men with men and it's an affirmation situation of not having a father. The lack of fathers That's right. and even the abuse from fathers That's right. has created a twisted way of thinking among some young people and and instead of having love they ha you know it's a, it's 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 a perverted type of affection. That's right. Perverted affection. Now, uh, talking about this, the Spirit of God really put it in my heart, the significance of this fathers and sons and sons and fathers. Mm -hmm. And let me explain something to you. The Catholic Church has understood this for centuries and the Protestants have not. Mm -hmm. Now, let me explain. Who is the Pope? Mm -hmm. He's Papa. Mm -hmm. he's, the, he's the spiritual leader, but he's like the Papa. Right. And even the priest, they, what do they call a priest? Father. Right. Okay. The Catholics call the priest father. father. All right. And in a Catholic family, one of the reasons that uh, Catholic families are so close to each other is they do understand this father relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean that a Catholic family doesn't have a natural father, but I'm talking about they understand spiritual father through the priest and the head father, the Pope. All right. Now, that's the Catholic side. Right. In Protestantism, I promise you, we don't understand that. No. In fact, we just, here's Protestantism, the preacher. The evangelist. The evangelist. The prophet. Yeah. We, we, look, at, we look at a title. Right. Or we look at a position, and there is no fatherhood. I'm going to go hear a sermon. Yeah. I'm going to go to a conference. Yeah. And we don't look at it as... The instruction comes from the head. And here's, right. okay, like my father's gone to be with the Lord March 10th of 2011, and I really miss him. But, the, but at the funeral, I walked up to Dr. T.L. Lowry, who's 82, and I said, you got to be my dad now. Yeah. He said, son, I've been your <laughs> spiritual dad for years. <laughs> and and uh, he, 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 he come up to see me, and he said, you be sure and call Papa when you need him. Yeah, yeah. And I, it really is that kind of relationship. Now, some people who don't understand this father-son relationship, we have a good friend of ours, Karen Wheaton, who has a great youth ministry. Absolutely. And there's a lot of older spiritual leaders who are mentoring hundreds and hundreds of young people. Right. Some people don't understand that. Yeah. It's a new thing to them. Yeah. But I want the body to understand you better get used to this type of thing because God in Malachi, before the coming of the Lord, turns the hearts of fathers right. to the children. And that does not just mean natural fathers, that spiritual fathers to lead them. And then sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Old men dream dreams Thanks. and young men. Here you see old and young working yep, together, work together. One with the vision, the other with the dream. Yeah. All right? Because you see, older men don't always have the strength to do what the younger can. So the younger can do what the, the prophet said, run with the vision. Right. And that's why we're forming a base, 24 leaders right. that I mentor, Mark does. Uh, that's why we have, and let me just tell you where we're at now and where we're going. I just felt like we're going to take this program. I hope everybody's paying careful attention to this. We have a building in town that we rent, holds about 298, 295. Yeah, two, 295. And during some of the larger conferences, we're full. Uh, if you, and I want to say this to you, if you're a parent anywhere in the United States and you're sending your child to school here in Cleveland. You need to tell them about OCI. It's on Tasso Road in Cleveland, Tennessee, the ministry facility. Contact Mark and go to our website at peristone.org. But <clears throat> if you're moving into the area, a lot of jobs are coming to Cleveland. We got three plants being built in Cleveland. <clears throat> and so if you're moving to the area, this is not just we need solid. I'm not talking about flakes. Right, come on. We need solid people even in the community here who love God, who love young people, right. just to come in and link and be a part That's right. of the services, yeah. of the prayer meetings that are taking place. We have a, a Friday night, a Thursday night prayer meeting in the barn. On, at the barn, the property. And let me tell you, Mark and I are discerning. If we get somebody in there that's, that's, that's 
there for the wrong purpose or the wrong motive, we'll know it. they'll be approached. Yeah. If yeah. there's someone in there that's coming in to cause division, they'll be approached because we've made it up our mind and we've got other leaders involved with this, very discerning young people, praying young people, by the yes. way, that there is a movement of God that He is sending around the world. He's going to send in Cleveland and North Alabama and North Georgia are going to definitely be a part of this. We won't go into all the reasons we know that, but we know <laughs> that, okay? And so we, we're, going to, we're going to set up the OCI, and when OCI is built, the plans are for it to hold 2,400 people, and it's going to be finished in the summer of 2013 at this point. Right. It'll hold 2,400 people. We're going to have a weekly service on Tuesday night. Now, this is not a church for all my pastor friends in Cleveland. I preach here in Cleveland. I have great relationship. I'll name them, Pastor Mitch uh, Maloney, Gary Sears, other pastors in this area, Brother, Brother Hank Davis. We have good relationship. This is not a Sunday church. No. This is a gathering place for the body, interdenominational gathering place for the body, but especially geared toward young people. And we're going to have Tuesday nights at, at 7, Thursday night prayer intercession. We're going to also be mentoring. Once a month, we will have a major conference where we're going to invite youth pastors and their groups to come here. And I'm going to tell you something. This is not going to be about fun and games. This is going to be about a move of the Spirit That's of God right. that will change your, your young people. That's right. And what we want is for there to be a place where we can come, fire be imparted in them, and then sent out to their churches That's right. and win their community for the Lord because the younger people are going to do it. I'm telling you, oh, yeah. when they get sold out, I don't know if you've ever dealt with youth, but when they get sold out to something, they're sold out to it. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to mentor young people for evangelism. That's right. Mentor them for world missions. Mentor them into starting uh, their own churches. And all of this is a part of what God's put on my heart. Now, so that you will know this, I'm continuing to preach what God gives me to preach on Manifest. We will still continue to have the major conferences even after OCI is built in certain parts of the country. So nothing changes. In fact, we have OCI, Omega Center International, and then we have Voice of Evangelism. Let me explain it to you the way one of my men who on the board did. Voice of Evangelism is the global voice. OCI is the regional voice. That's right. All right? And so on Tuesday nights at 7, you can come to the facility and be a part of this. And especially young people, we're going to develop a drama team. Uh, we're going to be developing just a lot through this. And again... This is a vision about reaching a generation. Now, we're not just after church kids. Now, I want you to listen to this. It's important. My goal is to see young people who are on drugs and alcohol to get delivered. That's right. And then if they need help, have places set up across the United States that we can point them to here. Go there six months for detox. Go there three months to get help. We're not counselors. Our, our job is not to sit and counsel. Our That's job right. is to preach the gospel through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Now, one of the things that... that I'll be very frank with you and honest with you. I'm concerned about, for those of you who are partners of our ministry, you know this. A lot of you that watch us on television may not know this. But when I was 18 years old and God gave me the title, Voice of Evangelism, and I say God, the Holy Spirit through prayer gave it to me. And He gave me the seven-point outreach plan, and we have followed that plan. One of the things He told me is He says, I don't want you sending out the monthly letters asking for money like many do because I want you to trust me. Right. And do you know... My partners know, I've only sent one letter by permission of the Holy Spirit, it was, I had to, in about 20 years. My partners get no mail from me except the magazine and the message of the month club and partners conferences, you know, partners tour to Israel, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but that's it. And because of this, people ne never hear me ask. So they assume, Perry don't need nothing, he's just going on, but I want to say something to you. I've asked the Lord... And I'm also doing a study Bible. Most of you are aware of the fact I'm doing a study Bible, which is a huge project. It's going to take me years to do that because I'm doing all the, all the research, basically chapter by chapter, verse by verse on my own because I want it to be what the Lord has given me over the years to share with people. Right. Very time consuming, very tiring. But the day we hold a Bible in our hand, I'll probably just pass out and cry. <laughs> just, you'll, have to, you'll have to peel me up off the floor. But I've asked the Lord, I said, God, this is a great project. This is a, the property's paid for. And I won't tell you what we paid for, but it was, it was a good price, but we've got the property paid for. But I've asked the Lord, I said, I don't know how I'm going to do this because if I don't ask at least once and God speak to some people, 
Now, there's some of you, I, I, I mean, I'm just going to say this. I think there's some of you watching me right now that there's a good possibility that, that you've been wanting to do something to affect the next generation. Don't, can I say something to you? Don't leave this life leaving stuff for kids who are lost as a goose who's going to explore it on drugs and alcohol and embarrass your name when it's over with. God's got to speak to some people who will hit a home run with me That's right. to get this done. Because the sooner I can get OCI finished debt-free, the sooner I can go on this camp. I'd like to be planning the camp now. I Absolutely. can't plan the camp now. But here's the deal. If the Lord tarries, I'll, I will leave this world and go be with my dad and Jesus and the saints one day up in paradise. Mm -hmm. When I do, I can't tell you what will happen to this studio and this facility. I really can't tell you. But I can tell you this, if I have a couple thousand youth leaders over here, oh, I feel something, brother, <laughs> and there's a youth camp going on the summer, right. then what God told me will carry on long after That's I'm right. buried on that hill up here. That's right. Long after. Yep. And I think the Lord is going to speak to some people to go over and above and beyond. And if you're one of those over, above, and beyond people that can do something big, you just call my secretary, Gina Bean, and you talk to her directly and coordinate it through her because I'm in another building where I'm not even where they're at. I'm in a total separate building from where the secretaries are. And so, but you just do that and believe with us because I believe God's got something special. I wanted to share this with you and I'll be back in just a moment uh, with, with just a few places we're going to be ministering. But I want to take some, some time and share this with you because I felt like it was very important that you understand where we're going and what we're doing. Amen. The apocalypse predicts that the seal of Satan will be forced upon the inhabitants of every nation in the future. In his newest book, number eight in the series, Unusual Prophecies Being Fulfilled, Perry Stone unlocks one of the greatest biblical mysteries, the famous 666 Mark of the Beast. In this 148 page book, Perry explains how the national debt crisis and food and water shortages will be the three triggers that introduce the biblical antichrist. He also explains the impact and prophetic insight of the recent Middle East uprisings and how China, the great red dragon, will be the leading king of the East during the tribulation and how a future Chinese leader may have a parallel to Revelation chapter 13. Perry also reveals the Islamic link to the mark, name and number of the beast. He exposes and updates the hidden agenda about why some in the U.S. government have attempted to force a new health care system on the American people. The book includes Perry's eight significant guidelines for living in the last days. The book is part of gift offer ST94. Included with the new book is a powerful audio CD that every parent needs to hear, Breaking Satanic Hedges and Covenants. This message explains how Satan builds a hedge around your unsaved children and family with a plot to bring them into a covenant of premature death. Many believers are aborting their prayers and spiritual breakthroughs by negative confessions from their mouth after praying. Several of Perry's ministry partners have said this revelation will change your situation, help you penetrate Satan's barriers, and teach you how to commission angels to bring in your lost loved ones. Perry's new book, Unusual Prophecies Being Fulfilled, The Seal of Satan and the Mark of the Beast, and the audio CD, Breaking Satanic Hedges and Covenants, are available now for your gift of just $25 or more, shipping and handling included. You can order online at perrystone.org or by calling toll-free at 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323. You can also write to Perry Stone at Post Office Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and enclose your gift of $25 or more and request gift offer ST94. This book is not in any retail bookstore and will only be available at this time through Perry Stone Ministries. We look forward to hearing from you, and as always, thanks for watching Manifest with Perry Stone. 
You know, among the many things that's happening in our day and time is a keen interest in what is about to happen in the future as it relates to the Bible. And this is the reason why we do spend time on Manifest talking about prophetic things, the future, the time of the end, and how we need to be keenly aware of the seasons that we're living in, the signs and seasons, as they indicate the return of the Lord. It's not just for us as believers to know. We're, we should take the information that we receive, share it with unsaved people and lost. Now, I know some of you do that and you say, well, I can't get a response to them. Well, let me tell you, as things continue to progress and they begin to understand a little bit more of the Scripture, I believe God's going to touch their heart. And one of the tools that we have uh, on Manifest this month is the brand new book, Unusual Prophets Being Fulfilled, book number, series number eight, The Seal of Satan, The Mysterious Mark and Number of Beast and the, uh, and, the, and the Coming of the Antichrist. Very, very detailed. And let me say something, this 148 page book, we wrote it recently. This is a fresh revelation from God and it's not available in any bookstores or anywhere. You have to go through the ministry, perrystone.org, call us, write us, or go to the 800 number in order to get this offer. And it also does come with that very powerful audio CD, Breaking Satanic Hedges. You, ordering this helps keep manifest on the air. I want you to know that, but we just wanted to share that with you. We're living in these incredible times. All right, let's look at the uh, places that we're going to be coming to. The Refreshing Center, Pastor Jerry Collins, Friday, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, October 7th through the 9th. Again, that's in Pulaski, Virginia, about an hour from Roanoke. Uh, World Harvest Church with Pastor Rod Parsley, Friday night the 14th and then Saturday morning uh, the 15th. And that'll be flying back to Cleveland that night. And at 5 o'clock Saturday night here in Cleveland at the T.L. Lowry Global Foundation Ministry Center, I'll be preaching at his prophetic conference. Then, whoo, can't wait for this. Coming up will be Abba's House. And uh, Abba's House is in Hickson, Tennessee. It's Pastor Ron Phillips' church. And, we, you know, we kind of go in there and take over the whole facility. But on October the 18th and the 22nd, that's a Tuesday night through Saturday night, and then a Wednesday morning through Saturday morning, we have morning services. I'll be preaching all five night services. And you've got Beth Stevens, Jensen Franklin, Damon Thompson. Uh, we've got Mark Casta. We've got just a great array of people coming. A preacher mania tag team on Saturday morning. You've never seen nothing like this, I promise you. And then we've got great praise and worship music. Now, the hotel information is at perrystone.org. And let me say this because we're beginning calls on this. There is no cost to attend. You come as you are, bring the entire family, set aside the time. And partners especially, I need you there at this meeting. We're going to be sharing something with you on Friday night, showing you something, God willing, that we're excited about. So anyway, I want to let you know that those are some of the places that we're going to be coming to. And of course, we will be having, God willing, our Israel tour where we're going to go back to Israel and tape another 25 brand new Manifest programs for the Manifest telecast. So many of you write us and you really enjoy the Israel programs. And to be honest with you, I don't blame you. We enjoy going over there. Now, let me tell you, it's work to prepare it and to tape it and break the equipment down, the precious folks that help us do that. But oh, when we watch the program and we see the results and we hear you uh, talking in our meetings and you send an email or a letter in of how God blessed you, touched you, saved you, uh, assisted you in some area of your life, encouraged your faith, that's why we do what we do. Now, we're in the seasons of God, and let me just remind you to go to perrystone.org, and you can give a special Seasons of God offering this at this month to help us keep the manifest telecast on the air as well. God bless each of you and keep you is my prayer, and uh, continue to pray for us to do the will of God in these last days. I'll see you next week.